This is well known, you guys. It is really not questionable. Immune function and micronutrient requirements change over the life course. This is from 2018. Various micronutrients are essential for immunocompetence, which means a healthy functioning immune system, particularly vitamins A, C, D, E, B2, which is riboflavin, B6, which is pyridoxine, B12, folic acid, which does not occur in nature. It should be folate, iron, selenium, and zinc. This is an incomplete list, of course, but let's just talk about these in general quickly. Vitamin A. Where do we get vitamin A from as humans? As I talk about in the book, if we want to get vitamin A from plants, we have to realize that every unit of beta carotene must be converted to retinol vitamin A, and that generally conversion rates are 1 to 21 for that conversion, meaning that we need 21 units of beta carotene to make one unit of retinol vitamin A. So if you see a vitamin A requirement on sweet potatoes, you have to divide that by 21 and make sure that you are getting enough vitamin A from plants to meet your vitamin A requirement. It's much easier to get preformed vitamin A from animal foods, as I talk about in my book, The Carnivore Code. This is liver, this is egg yolks. Vitamin A is crucial for immune function. How many of the people hospitalized in China do you think have vitamin A deficiency? I think a lot. Vitamin C is important. Again, if you want to supplement vitamin C, that is fine. I won't go into all of the vitamin C literature here. Generally speaking, in the past, supplementation with vitamin C has failed to prevent the common cold. This is not the common cold. We don't know what's going on. This is probably a time to have adequate vitamin C status. Again, I continue to believe we can get adequate vitamin C status from animal foods. If you want to supplement vitamin C, that is fine. Vitamin D is crucial for this. The question on my mind is whether or not we can get all the things we need in a vitamin D supplement. That is, is vitamin D in these studies just a proxy for sun exposure? I would much rather get my vitamin D from ultraviolet light. And we know that many of these infections are seasonal, tending to uh, become less intense in the summer months, perhaps connected with rising vitamin D, perhaps connected with other benefits of ultraviolet light. I think that I prefer to get my vitamin D from ultraviolet sources. I've talked about this repeatedly on other podcasts. If you do not have access to the sun right now, you could consider other sources of real vitamin D that is ultraviolet light, like a spare T UV lamp, S-P-E-R-T-I UV lamp. Um, I do think we need vitamin D, but I also think we need ultraviolet light for immune function. These are non-negotiable. Vitamin E, there is lots of vitamin E in animal foods, as I've talked about in the book and many other places. When I look at carnivore diets, people have tons of vitamin E in their body. It's probably an animal fat and animal meat. Vitamin B2, I also talk about in the book. This is riboflavin. There are not great sources of riboflavin in the plant kingdom. If you want to get adequate riboflavin, I feel strongly this will come from animal foods, specifically liver and heart. Uh, B6 is pyridoxine. Again, in the book, I specifically mention studies in which uh, there is a pyridoxine glucoside in, which, uh, in plants, which makes pyridoxine much less bioavailable. B12, we know, is not found in plant foods. Folate is found in plant foods, but I believe it is more uh, robust and bioavailable in animal foods. Iron is, of course, much more bioavailable in animal foods. Selenium, also more bioavailable in animal foods. Any of the minerals are going to be more bioavailable in animal foods because they are not chelated by phytic acid and oxalates. Finally, zinc, much more bioavailable in animal foods. In fact, in the book, I discuss a study in which oysters were administered with and without black beans and tortillas. Oysters are one of the richest sources of zinc. Without black beans or tortillas, zinc levels rose strikingly. And with those foods, zinc levels were uh, significantly lower. In fact, with both of those foods, zinc levels did not rise at all when zinc was administered. How can we have a healthy immune system without eating animals? This is my concern. This is my message. No matter what infection we are looking at, we need to consider the immune system very carefully. And we need to have adequate amounts of all of these vitamins and minerals. And I really believe that animal foods are the best sources of these vitamins and minerals. I've never claimed that a carnivore diet can cure coronavirus, but I definitely will say that if you are eating an animal-rich diet, I believe your immune system will be better equipped because you will be more nutrient adequate and you will likely 
be less insulin resistant. And I do not think that is a controversial statement in 2020. And I think that if anything, this is the time to know where your nutrients are coming from and to do your research.